What's going on? What's going on, people? What is going on today? It is Drams on Deck. And today, today we're going to head to Mexico. We're going to head to Mexico and we're going to do a little something, something. Now, we already took care of the Grand Patrol. You, you, you already taken care of. And, you know, mostly these are my whiskeys. These are my rums. I'm going to get to the units a little bit, too. But today, we're going to bring it all the way down. Oh, yeah. Mark the Morse. All the way down to right about here. Yes, yes. So these right here is all my mascals. Well, not all, but most of them. And today we're going to do with this right here. We're going to deal with these two right here. We got the mascal burrito festerio. And these are two of them right here. So this one right here, I'll bring it out and show you. This one right here, I like it. This is 42% mescal intestinal uh, yovin. And this right here is, uh, I would call, a, well, all of them. It's a very, I would say maybe a slightly entry level one. And this one right here is, uh, as well, this is the Mescal uh, Burrito Festero right here. This is about at 50% right here. 50.2 to be exact. And this is the Ancestral line. And right here, this is going to be one that's going to be a little bit more earthy. So anyway, I, the thing I like about these bottles right here, that they're hand painted so if you take a look at it you can even see probably some brush marks on here you see right here the local uh the locals of the uh, down there in mexico in this section that they make this uh they every each bottle is hand painted one by one so you're gonna some may differ from one to one but i like each one is literally a hand painted you can see brush marks on it i really like the bottle so you can probably if you want to keep it and not only that as you can see the top of where my hand is it's a nice very nice uh I, I was like a heavy stone, so to speak, uh, for this. So it's like a very heavy, almost like a rock stone for the top. And then obviously you have the whole bottle. So these are pretty cool bottles. This one in particular. Uh, but you can keep that stuff if you choose to. But anyway, we're going to dive all into it. We got Moscow on review. Let's go. What's going on, baby? We're back at it again. Trams on deck with the hot reviews. And as promised, today I have the Mescal. Today on deck for review, we have two of them, both from the Mescal uh, Burrito Fiestero line. Uh, one is the Ancestral line, and one is the Antestrial line. So um, we're gonna do both of them. Um, to th so I think the the major difference. They're both from the same area. I think is Yovan in, in uh, Mexico. Uh, but this one right here. Based upon this one is is the the C uh, is it, I guess the name of the agave. There's different types of uh, agave that go into different mezcals. Uh, this one is the Ceniso. Ceniso is the, uh, the type of agave plant used for this one. And for this one, for the ancestral line is the Masperio. So Masperio is the name of the plant used for this one. And from what I've read, the the Masperio plant it takes 14 to 16 years. <laughs> to harvest so till it's ripe enough till it's correct enough for it to be used in a muscal. That's a long time. The plants uses 14 to 16 years old for this. And so that's almost equivalent if you know if you're doing a, a scotch for example or even a bourbon that's aged 15 to 20 years. You know, you're aging for 20 years and this one you're aging the plant that goes into it for the same amount of years. So a uh, cool little neat thing. Um these and the one that I since they're both uh same line, the one difference that I've read uh did my research was that um this one when they when they use to the ferment this, they use a copper steel, and when they use this one, they use a clay steel. So this is a clay steel used to ferment, and this is a copper steel. And from what my understanding is, the clay steel is what allows the ABV to go a little bit higher. Hence why, I guess, when the heating element, because they bake the, for this particular one, they bake the actual agave. Some of them, some uh, agaves are done with it underground. These are baked in ovens and the heat, uh, they pretty much like an oven bake. And then they use the, they put the clay steel on top of it. And something about the material from the clay steel is what the heat, what, I guess, uh, gets with the heat and it makes it a little bit of higher ABV than this one. So um, that's all I really know about it. But anyway, so this one is 50.2% and this is 42%. So it's pretty much 8% higher, which is pretty significant. And, you know, like I said, most tequila is only 40%. But the thing I love about Mezcal is that they're, at least all the ones I have is well over 40%. So um, this is probably one of the highest ABV Mezcals, if not the highest that I have in, in my house. So 
Um, 50%. I, I like higher ABVs. And as I said, stated earlier, these are all hand painted. So I love the uh, artistry of these bottles, in particular this one. They're hand painted, and I guess it you know, helps the economy as well. So that's a good thing. And I, I actually like the, the heavy stone. So I just I just like the artistry of the bottle, the tall sleekness of it. But now it's time to see if, if the what's actually inside is just as good as the art. Um, so for this one right here, which is the, I, I'll just say the, um, the Moss Perillo one, which is the Ancestral line. This one I paid just shy of 100. So I think I'll, we'll say 90 bucks. I paid $90 for this one, just damn near $100. And for this one, for the Siniso, um, uh, 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 Siniso is the name of the plant. Like I said, different guy. But the Siniso one for this one, for the Ancestral uh, line, this one was about 45 bucks. So it's 45 and this is damn near 100. So, you know. That's the price difference. So this is more than double this. So um, quick little story, though. Uh, I think right before I left California, which was last summer in 2021, um, me and my lady, we all went to, we went to a Mexican restaurant in Carlsbad, California. So Carlsbad is like on the outskirts of uh, San Diego. Really nice neighborhood. A really nice city. Anyway, Carlsbad, there was a, a restaurant that we went to called Casa de Bandino, Bandero. I think that's the name of it. And we went there, Casa de Benero, and we ate some good Mexican food. Chips with salsa was banging. And this was like maybe July. This is July of last last summer, 2021. And uh, so it was her idea. She took me there. And I and I wanted, I actually wanted some mescal because I was I'm a big fan of the Class Azu. If you watch my channel, I love Class Azu. Um, that's a tequila, not a mescal. And uh, it's, you know, one that had additives to it. It's a little bit more artificially sweetened, but I did like that. Anyway, they have a mescal. It has a really cool, like, it's almost like a matte black bottle. This, well, you can't see it in the, in the light, but um, just, for, just for purposes right here, um, this is the same type bottle. So this matte is all, this whole entire bottle, all black and matte black. And it has like a very multicolored diamond uh, top on the top of it. The bottle looked hella cool. I was like, you know what? I want to try this. So um, I went to the counter. I said, how much is it for a shot? Because normally for a shot of, mes of mescal for the uh, Class Azu goes for about 50, 60 bucks. They was like, oh, it's only $20 something dollars here. I'm like, what? Let me get that. Long story short, they, they pump faked me. They had the bottle there, but it was empty. I couldn't get it. Like, oh, sorry, my friend, no mescal. I'm like, oh, man, you need to take that bottle down. So anyway, they they came back and they was like, well, why don't you try something else? I'm like, well, I, I kind of want it. Like, we got some stuff that just good, not better. So he was like, here, try this. And he poured this. And he, he was like a sample. It wasn't like a full shot, like a, like a nice little sample size. He's like, just try this, my friend. I think you may like this. I was like, okay. So I got at the bar. I was a little disappointed because I couldn't get the uh, class of Zuma's call. So I, you know, took a shot of this. And I was like, damn, this, this ain't bad right here. I'm like, damn. And it was, you know, it was flavor folded me and I just really enjoy it and I just said let me get another now let me get a full shot so I got a full shot of that that was good and uh, I just ever since then I kind of just kind of piqued my curiosity enough that I said you know what I'm going to start going down this Miss Cow lane and really start diving into it especially because I was in Southern California where there, I have access to a lot more mescal than I do here where I'm at in the state of Iowa so and I think you know, Southern California and probably Texas, I would say, I'm not saying the, those are the only two, but I would say, you know, Texas and California are probably two states that you could probably find an enormous, a lot more options in mezcal and tequila than you can in most other spots because of location and proximity to Mexico, if that makes sense. But Southern California, um, where I was at, San Diego is just, you know, a little less than an hour away from Mexico, so you're really close. So um, Old Town Tequila is a store. Um, and I went, it's close to downtown um, San Diego. So if you ever, if you live there or if you travel there, just FYI, that's a good spot to go to and try, uh, different. They have a, a just an enormous amount of options when it comes to tequila and mezcal all together. So if you're, if you're looking for something new, try that store out. I think they actually ship, uh, nationwide. If you go online, they can probably ship it to you. But anyway, um, so this was like one of the first, um, uh, uh mescals I really tried. I liked it and I was like, man, let me and it kind of just started me down that line of trying different ones. So that's kind of how I got started with that. This is a little quick story and I went to that little nice Mexican restaurant in uh Carlsbad, California. Anyway, so here we are now. We have this so like I said we have the uh, uh mescal burrito and uh festero both of them 
So one's at sensory and one's intestinal. Um, so I'm going to start uh, from uh, left to right. This one right here is the 42%. Um, this is the cheaper version. Uh, slot, you know, like I said, this is 40, around 45 bucks or so. This was about almost $100. So um, well, we're going to nose it. We're going to taste it. And we're going to score it. Let's go. You get a nice amount of fruit on here, on the nose. Pears, apples, plums. You get a nice little small, just a whiff of salt, and you get a nice, a nice little uh, smoke factor on here. Yeah, I said smoke is is, is kind of, it's not dialed up. It's not super smoky, but it's like a, just a little whiff of smoke with the salt and that fruit. <sighs> smells a little herbally too. Like I like, like a little earthy herb. I like that as well. Just imagine if you had like some oregano or some some uh, greens or like a uh, season, like some uh, parsley, it's like a fresh parsley or something like that. That earthiness that like if you picked it right out, that's kind of that mint smell. That's what you smell. Um, additions, like I said, that that sweet apple smell, pear, just a little bit of smoke. Very nice. I'm going to take a quick sip. Let's see what we got on the palate. Cheers. Mm. All right now. First sip is always warming. Go straight down, coat the insides, get a nice and get nice and warm. Take one more quick sip, and I'm gonna dive deeper in the notes. As you can see, unlike whiskey, this is completely clear, so it looks like water. So there's not much color to really describe, but it's completely clear, like vodka. Now this one right here, it's, it tastes like a sweet blanco with a little bit of hint of smoke on it. So you get that's that heavy agave plant. You get the so you really get the agave on there. You get that like that little undertones of sweetness. Like I said, that apple, that pear. And then when I roll it around, so I pick up a nice little salt, that mint, that herbal uh, taste, the herbal notes they have. And then you get some smoke, but the smoke on here is not super heavy though. So it's very lightly smoked, like very light on smoke. So if you're so just imagine if you're someone who's uh maybe you never had a mescal, you you're a tequila person and you're looking to try a different uh like a mescal for the first time or you're new to it, and you're someone who maybe uh may not necessarily you know be have experience with smoke, I think this would be a good entry level mescal to try coming from tequila. Because it's not overly smoky, it's very and it has it has a, a like I said some similarities with a blanco. I think it's sweeter than a blanco, it has more herbal notes than a blanco. Obviously, way more herbal notes. That's a major difference. And then, like I said, it has a little bit of smoke to it, but very light. So nothing that's going to be off putting it really. And this is sweeter that you can still use it in the margarita if you wanted to. You know what I mean? So I I I, I really think this is a good crossover uh, mezcal to try if you never had a mezcal. Um, the like I said, the smoke factor ain't super high. It's not super. It's not overly earthy, wish off putting or anything like that. It's still very sweet. So um, I just think that. And then the price factor. If you well, first of all, if you can find this, I mean, the price factor um, this shouldn't be uh, too off putting as well. It's only forty seven bucks. So not nowadays tequilas are super high. I mean, tequilas nowadays are forty percent ABV. Like we'll take a Sincoro, for example, the Michael Jordan's tequila. You buy the the aged one, then they only, that one's going to be well over well over a hundred dollars. It's still forty percent, and so it, and it has additives in it. So um, these are all natural. So I, I like that about it. Um, I just like the 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 nose of it, the like the earthiness and just the 
the, the herbal notes, the, the you know, the smoke. I just, I just enjoy the nose. I'm not a huge nose person, but when I, when I, when I really enjoy a nose, I really enjoy it. I can almost dab my hand and just rub it on like cologne. So, I mean, it, it smells so good. It really does. But I took a little dollop of water in here just to see if there's a difference. It's 42%, so it really doesn't need water. But just, just for the review purpose, just to give you guys an option to see if it affects the water in a good or a negative or just at all. So put a little bit of water just to see if it affects the, the, uh, the taste factor of this. So that being said, let's take this last sip with water. Then I'm going to score it for you. Tastes the same. Still got a nice amount of sweetness. Like I said, that that fruit I picked up, apple, pear, nice little sea salt and brine character to it. If you ever had a peated scotch, like a Brutalites, like Octomore or something like that, or any well, certain Lafroids, has that salt, that sea salt and brine kick that you would get. But it has that similar energy with this. And that's another reason why I like Mescal, because it, it, the smokiness and the brine is has a similar character that you would get from a peated scotch. So I actually, I enjoy all spirits, mezcal, uh, tequila, cognac. I do uh, bourbons, all any whiskey from anywhere in the world. I don't care where it's from, Indian whiskey, American whiskey, you know, scotch, Japanese whiskey, Irish whiskey. I don't give a damn where it's from. If it's good stuff, it's good stuff. So, um, so when you try different spirits, I think it makes you more well-rounded. And so because, like I said, I love scotch. I like, I love the similarities. If you ever had an Isla Peated Scotch, it has some similarities with this. So, um, it's creamy. It has the, uh, like I said, the smoke factor. I like it. It really is good stuff. So, um, yeah, with or without water, it's very same. I don't, I don't think you need water because, like I said, 40, 42%, it's just over 40 So, it's not heavy. It's not as a pack of punch. It doesn't have, you know, the umph to it. It's not going to burn you or anything like that. It's very smooth, mellow. But you'll pick up the earthy herbal notes and get the salt. The brine, the fruity, like the the pear and apple notes, you get just a little bit of smoke, very little, and it's just and it rolls. It's, it's very balanced, but the the note that I taste the most out of it actually is the sweetness number one, the uh, earthiness number two, and then I would say the the brine three, and the last is the smoke. So that's why I would think that this would be a good crossover from someone coming from tequila looking to try a mezcal. Um, I think that it has some, it is, it has uh, some little bit of common eyes with the Blanco, but it's way more, to me, it's way more developed. It has more layers of flavor, in my opinion, than a, any entry level uh, Blanco for, for the most part. Um, really good stuff. So if I had to rate this one of a 10, 10 being the best for me, Dram's on deck. Um, I keep my, when I'm, I'm, when I say one of 10, I'm going to put this on against other muscals. Okay. So I'm only, gonna, I'm not comparing this to it, uh, even though I mentioned it, I has, I said it has some similarities to a piece of scotch, but when I, I don't put this on the same scale as a piece of scotch, because that's not what it is, nor is it a regular tequila, nor is it a cognac. So I'm only just keep in mind, I'm only comparing it against other muscals, but one of the 10, um, I like the fact that it's easy sipping, uh, very approachable. Um, I like the fruit factor it has in it. So for me, one of the 10, um, I give this uh, um, a solid, uh, man, eight seven five for me. I give this a solid eight seven five. It, it's really good. I think that it's, it's, even though it, uh, it's only forty two percent, and I and I love super high ABVs, but very good. So if you like the that factor that I put out to you, like the salt, the, the light smoke, the fruit, the brine, the earthiness, the herbal notes, I think you'll enjoy it. Like I say, it's very. It's very, very drinkable. You could, like I said, you could mix it in a, in a margarita. It will still, you know, do its job very well. So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna take one quick sip, and then I'm gonna switch over. Now we're on this one here, right here. This is the ancestral line. This one is more expensive. As a little sleeker bottle, as we stated earlier. Like I said, the, some of the the plants in here is sixteen up to sixteen years old, so it's you know it's got some very grown uh, uh, plants and herbalness inside of here. So that being said, let's see what this nose has to offer. Wow, right off the bat, it, it definitely smells different. Even though they have the same name, it, it has a very distinct, different smell to it. Wow. 
Wow. It smells like like wood, like a like a tree bark. Like very herbal. In a good way. It, it, it smells like onion powder, like fresh celery, like 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 celery, uh, almost like uh celery seasoning. If you if you mix uh the, the seasoning I'm referring to is celery when you when you have the celery seasoning, that's what it smells like. Celery season, bark, some kind of like a tree bark. Very herbal. Almost smell like some some weed almost. Like a little like I don't know what kind of weed, but it, it smells like a little bit of some weed. You know what I'm saying? Some marijuana. Just a little like a little, very little though. Very little. Not heavy, not no flavoring, but just if you, if you had I suppose you had uh, put some weed in the bag and like a week ago when you pulled it out, it's empty, like a little small trace smell. It smells a little bit which actually smells good. I mean, I don't smoke at all, the FYI, but it does smell good, the herbalness to it. <sighs> very nice. Like I said, a lot more earthy. I don't really pick up any fruit on this on the nose at all. I pick up a little bit of smoke, but not heavy, same as that one. But you pick up a lot, a, a crap ton of earth, like I said. Bark, mint, celery, that's like the celery seasoning. Some like very herbal, like I said, almost a light, light marijuana type of smell to it. Which is like in a pleasant way, like a, like a fresh plant. Like you put your nose in a fresh plant, that's what it smells like. Now, like I said, it has like a nice, pleasant tree bark smell. I like, I like the nose on this because it's different. It's not something that you that you just you know smell all the time. I mean, I normally nose in whiskeys and and uh, tequilas, but this one right here is very different to me in a good way. I like different things at times, at times. So, <sighs> yeah, like that, like that nose. All right, Let's see what this palette has to offer. Fifty percent. Cheers. Wow. Mm. Uh, 50% ain't no pump now. And what I would say, it doesn't have like a, a off-putting burn, but it does have some heat to it. It's 50%, it's 50.2%, so that's a higher proof. So <clears throat> it's letting me know it's there. And I'm, I'm receiving, I'm receiving the proof right now. I'm receiving it. It's letting me know the 50% is there, and I'm receiving it. A lot of that the notes that I said on the nose that I'm picking up on the on the palate is very. I would say today this mescal is probably the one of the most different tasting that probably any and I haven't had but maybe I'll say in the past year I probably tried. Uh, what I make? I probably tried at least at least 10, 12 different mescal. I say at least a dozen different mescal. And this is probably out of all the ones I saw. This is, there's still tons more that I haven't had. I've even had some pachugas, which is like the, uh, you know, Asian meat, but this is a very different tasting one. So much. So let me take one more quick sip so I can dive deeper in these notes for you. One second. Man, this thing tastes like a wood tree bark. Yeah, it tastes like a lot of straight garlic and onion on here. Like I said, the herbal the notes, the earthy herbal notes. Onion, celery, garlic, tree bark, wood. I don't really pick up too much fruit on here at all. I do pick up a little, little bit of smoke, but very little. Same here with this. It's not heavily smoked. It's like maybe the, the Del Maguey's. Those are a little more, a little bit more smoky, but these aren't quite smoky. But I would say I'm picking up way more herbal notes on here. Maybe that's why. Maybe that clay pot, the earthiness of this, you can really pick up the, 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 the earthiness and tones from. I guess it's baked with that clay pot, that 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 fermentation. Because I, you know, that's a big process to make mescal. I mean, they have to cut it up. They have to arrange it. They, they mix it in with uh, water. And it's just. They bake it off. I mean, it's just it's a it's a process. It's a it's a lot of manual labor. They don't really use a lot of machinery like they do, like maybe if they're making, um, you know, uh, certain whiskeys or whatnot. 
Um, this one is pretty much almost done by hand. There's not a lot of machinery. It's, it's a lot of things are done by hand. Every the products that, like I said, the plants are coming from the earth. They using like machetes and hacking it up in the hot sun and using natural, you know, springs and stuff. It's just very by the book, old school, hand done, everything almost done by hand. The bottle painting is very earthy, very done, you know, like really, really, like I said, I, I like the fact that they do this by the book, by hand, and it's just like hard labor. And you can definitely taste the earthiness uh, in this spirit. It really does. And, and I'm usually a person who likes, you know, uh, you know, layers of complexion. This has some layers in it. It's just the complexion of flavors are any, it's like anything I've had before. I'm, you know, I, I, I would say at least 70% of stuff I, I drink, well, not maybe 60% of stuff I drink is mostly whiskey. But I'll, and then the other 40 is, like I said, tequilas, cognacs, and whatnot. But I'm telling you, th this is very different in a good way. Um, like I said, you you pick up that onion, celery, the garlic, very herbal plants like like cilantro. Just I taste all that, you know, little, just a little bit of smoke, a little bit of salt on that, and it's just, you know, it's, it's it smells like a like a like a taste like a well seasoned like spirit. It's just it's just unlike I don't think I haven't had any mezcal that tastes exactly like this. This ancestral light is very different. It's high ABV. So I'm going to take one sip with the water. Let me see if the water opens up or any, any of the flavors that I haven't had already noted. I get more tree bark. A little bit more of that onion celery note on it. Very different. I think this is something that if you're into herbal and organic tasting things, you would like this. You would love this, actually. It tastes like a fresh, like, seasoned plant almost. <laughs> if, if I, if I, it's like a plant season with, with onions and garlic, and it's just very, very earthy, herbally, organic. You know, not, it's not super sweet, not super smoky, very, very earthy. So if you're not an earthy person, you're probably not going to like this. I, I to tell you the truth, I haven't had a lot of experience with earthy things, so this is especially in in, in, in the muscal. So these wild muscals are earthy. This one is probably the most that I've had to date. But but in whiskey, so much not so much in whiskey. But I I would say that you know uh, that's why you open your up your your uh, self to try different things. You know I don't like, I don't like to pigeonhole myself into one simple thing. You know a lot of people only just review. Cognac, some people only review, you know, review bourbons. They don't, they don't review number bourbon. You know, I don't do, I don't discriminate. I get it all. Bourbons, tequilas, cognac, mezcals, scotches. I do it all. So I think that's the good thing about being diverse because you can try different things and really, really learn. It makes you more worldly. Back to this. Um, like I said, if you're an earthy person, you're not going to like this. And not only that, I think this is something that you probably have to drink. Like, like let's suppose you, you know, like you're, uh, Kicking back with someone who really enjoys spirits or these type of things, I think this is something that when you drink this, you kind of kind of focus on it because it's not super sweet. It's not like the the super sexy drink that's just super sweet that everybody's gonna gravitate to. Every, it takes a certain kind of person to really really enjoy this. Everybody ain't gonna like this. If you if you know if I gave it to my girlfriend, she would probably hate this because it's not sweet. It's not like a fruity ass you know uh, papaya. You know this is something that you, if you sipping the neat, you really gotta be into earthy herbal things. It's not super sweet, but it still has a lot of complex flavors that are just different from anything I've had before. So because of that, I like it. So this is something that I, I can only take this in doses. Like I, you know, what I'm saying if I if I'm like, you know what, I just want something that's organic, earthy, I'm gonna reach for this. You know, but I have to be in the mood for it. You know, and, I, and I, seven days of the week, I'm not gonna be in an earthy, herbal mood. Some days I'm gonna be fitter, but I will say more days than not, I'm probably not gonna be in that. So because of that, I think this is more of a go-to. So if, if you're if you're if you're introducing mezcal for the first time to somebody, I think this is definitely the way to go. It's cheaper, available, it has more fruit factor. It's not overly um um uh, smoky. So for someone, so if, you, if I'm trying to introduce someone for the first time who's never had mezcal. I'm going to go with this because it has more fruit factor. It's not quite high ABV. It's not as herbally and earthy as this. You know, you can sip this, you know, if you're having a barbecue or you're just playing some cards or watching a ball game, you know, you can sip this and just kind of chill and you can kind of enjoy the flavors. This, you got to kind of kind of focus on it or be the type of person who kind of who gravitates to, like I said, earthy herbal type of notes. You know what I'm saying? 
everybody ain't those type of person. So I am a type of person, but only in certain times. So if I'm coming home, I'm kind of like, you know, just want to kick back and chill and, and, you know, sitting back with people, I'm probably not going to grab this. I'm going to grab, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to necessarily grab that. But between these two, that's one I would grab for those type of things. So they're both good, though. But like I said, you know, um, this one, like I said, fruity, a uh, little bit of salt, but it has a nice amount of fruitness. It's very soft, very easy sipping, very light smoke. It almost tastes, like I said, like an enhanced Blanco with just a little bit more earthiness, more sweetness, a little bit of smoke. This, I don't think I've had anything. I've had different scars, but not quite like this. Like I said, because, you know, certain scars are more smoky than this. Like I said, Del Miguel is a more smoky than this, but this is way more herbally. Um, so like I said, so it just depends on what your profile is. So if you're an earthy, herbally person, this is good stuff. High proof. It's different. It's very like I said, garlic, celery, just spice, like you know, like a like a, almost like a like some kind of different plants. Like I said, the smell of it has has small reminiscences of a marijuana leaf a little bit. Uh, but like I said, just very herbally, garlicly, just it's it's different. There's not a lot of fruit on here, not a lot of smoke on either one. This one has definitely has fruit. This one does not. So um, that's why I guess it's the more ancestral line because they make it ancestral. sounds like a prehistoric odor. And with that clay pot, sounds like something that's more, you know, ancestral. So just depends on your mood. But anyway, um, I rate this one of a 10, 10 being the best for me, Drams on deck. Um, I, I give this, a, a, you know, on a Moscow line. It's different. I like it, though. I give it an eight out of a ten. I, I, you know, I, I like it. I like it. I like the fact that it's different. The herbs that I get is just, it's just a different vibe. When I drink this, I'm, a, I have to be a certain vibe to drink certain things. Certain things I want sweet. Certain things I want dry. Some things I want high proof. Some things I want easy sipping. So for this, I'm gonna have to be that kind of. I'm gonna have to be in a different kind of vibe to enjoy this the right way. So um, this one, I, my vibe can be a little bit more loose. This one, not so. I'm gonna be like a certain vibe. So for me. Because, you know, I like the fact that it's different, but, you know, I wouldn't say something I would necessarily drink every day. I damn sure wouldn't do that, but it's still good. So, 8 out of a 10 for this one. This is an eight seven five out of a 10. So, I, I think they're both damn good. They're very different. Even though they look, they have the same look and they have the same name, almost. Um, they're very different. Very different. Like I said, sweetness, very early. But, like I said, but the spices I'm picking up on things, it's just, it's just different. So... Um, good stuff, like I said. Garlic, celery, very planty, uh, or like or like parsley, or you know what I'm saying, garlic, oregano. You get those kind of spicy. Get like a like a heavy bark on here, like a heavy woody, like not like a sweet oak like you get from a tequila, but like a bark, like a tree bark. I get like rhubarb. You just you just get those earthy ground type of elements in it, and, and, and you can taste it. It's very distinct and it, it's good. It's just like I said, you got to be in a certain vibe for that, though, in my opinion. Both damn good though. But like I said, that ain't cheap. That's almost a hundred dollars. So if you if if you ain't the type of vibe person, I would say save you hundred dollars and get a different kind of muscal. If you're going super fruity, uh, but like I said, it just depends on your palate. You know, tomato, tomato. But hopefully you got some out of it. So if you're looking for something different and you're looking for a muscal, uh, hopefully you can. This can kind of lead you in that direction or give you at least a different. Um, you know, thought or process if you see it in your local store because every every state every store ain't gonna have this. So if you do see it. And you do have the availability to get it. Even, even if you don't have it in your store, you can always get it online. But hopefully this, this review can help you. If you're looking for something in Moscow, if you never had it before, something that's different, you get an element of what it costs, what it tastes like, and it hopefully helps you out when you, in your new shopping. If you're looking for, you know, shopping in, in the aisle and just want something different, you know. So that's that's my take on it. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. They, they for free, man. And also... Check my description. I have a link for my Instagram page. I have a lot of bottles on there and a couple of reviews. So be sure to check my Instagram page out as well. And hit me in the comment section if you had these before. Even if you have not, I want to know your take on this and your opinion with your Muscals. Even if it wasn't this, this particular brand, but a different Muscal, give me your take on Muscal. I really enjoy interacting with you guys as you guys are my drinking buddies. But hopefully you got some out of it also have a cash app patreon if you choose to support um i really appreciate it i, I think i love interacting with you guys thank you for supporting me and I'm, I'm gonna keep this rolling on so stay tuned we got more hot reviews on the way drams on deck yes sir.